How's it going? It's finally time for a video about how to connect Amazon Echo to Home Assistant without Nabucasa and without the subscription. If you're looking for an easy way to connect Amazon Echo to Home Assistant, this ain't it. If you're looking for a foolproof method to absolutely guarantee that nothing could possibly go wrong, this ain't it. If you're ready to run the gauntlet of Amazon developer tools and walk the razor's edge where one small misstep could send your whole project spiraling into oblivion, then you're in the right place. If I didn't scare you off yet, let's check it out. There's more than one way to connect Amazon Echo to Home Assistant without Nabucasa. The one I'm gonna show you is called Haska. <laughs> Home Assistant Alexa Skill Adapter, version three. The geniuses behind this project are Mike Fez and Mike Grant. Great work, fellas. Thanks a bunch. They put together the actual code that we're gonna use, but more importantly, they put together some great instructions on how to get it done. What I'm gonna do is just walk you through the instructions. I followed them step by step, and I was honestly surprised when it worked. That's enough yapping. Let's get started. Alrighty. Step one is to make sure that your home assistant computer will not change its IP address. So go into your router and reserve the IP address for whatever machine is running home assistant for you. Next, we're gonna need to do some port forwarding because we're gonna need to access Home Assistant from outside your home network. You need to forward the external port 443 to the IP address of the computer running Home Assistant and the internal port 8123 and protocol TCP. Every router does this a little differently. I'm sure Google knows how to do it for yours. Now go to duckdns.org and log in with one of these options. And we're gonna set up a URL that will point to your home network's external IP address. You get to choose the first part of this domain, so come up with something clever that you're sure you'll never, ever, ever be able to forget. Oh, the Zigbee! Oh, the Zigbee! Oh, the Zigbee! Oh, the Zigbee! We're cruising right along. This isn't so bad, right? Now we're gonna go back to Home Assistant, go to the add-on store, search for DuckDNS, and install the DuckDNS add-on. The documentation tab has some instructions and it shows you what you need to do for the configuration of the add-on. We're gonna use Let's Encrypt, so accept terms needs to be true. And then we paste in the <coughs> token and put in the DuckDNS domain that we just set up. Make sure we save it and then we'll be ready to start the add-on. You can check the log tab to see if there were any errors. I can't imagine that there would be. It's just good practice. Now we need to add a few lines to our Home Assistant configuration. We need to start an HTTP section, define the base URL, which is the DuckDNS URL we set up, and we need to tell it where to find the SSL certificate and the SSL key. I'll put these lines of text in the description so you can copy and paste. Just remember to change the base URL to your DuckDNS domain. Once you've done that, save it and restart Home Assistant. You can now go to a browser and type in your DuckDNS URL. Because we're using encryption, make sure you use HTTPS. Congratulations, you now have access to Home Assistant from outside your home network and it's encrypted. Now we can go to Haska on GitHub and open the wiki tab. If we click the before you begin page, you can see we've completed pretty much everything there already. For the Amazon developer page, you use your normal Amazon sign-in. But Amazon Web Services is different and you will need to start a new account if you don't already have one. The next step is to go to the downloading and preparing for Haska page. First step here is to just download the Haska zip file. Put it anywhere you want. Just make sure you can find it easily later because we are gonna need it. Step two on this page is to make sure you have these three lines in your Home Assistant configuration. If you've been playing around with Home Assistant for a while, you probably already have the API line. After you make those changes, save it and restart Home Assistant. Step three on this page is to make a long-lived access token. To do that, go to your profile page, which is the little letter in the bottom left corner. 
scroll down to the bottom where it says long lived access tokens, click create token, give it a name, and then it will give you the token. Copy it and save it someplace because we're going to need to paste it in somewhere important later on. You're going to end up with five or six lines like that that you'll need to save. So you might as well keep another text document open for copying and pasting. Now we go to the setup page. I hope you haven't had too much trouble getting to this point because from here on is where it really starts to get difficult. First, we go to the Amazon Developer Console and log in with your Amazon account information. It's important that this is the same account that you've used to register all your Amazon Echo devices. Create a new security profile. Give it a name, a description, and a URL. I don't think it matters too much what you actually put in there. You just have to have something there. Save that, and on the next page, scroll over to the right and click on the little gear, and then click Web Settings. This is going to give you a client ID and a client secret that you're going to need to save for later. So open your text document back up and paste both of those things in there for safekeeping. Now we're going to go back to developer.amazon.com, open up the left panel, and click Developer Console. Right there at the top, choose Aleka Skills Kit, and then Create Skill. We're going to name this skill. Haska is a good name. Choose your language, and then select the Smart Home tile. Scroll back up and finalize by clicking Create Skill. On the next page that comes up, you'll get a skill ID number. You're going to want to save that as well. Go back to your document, copy and paste. The next bushel of steps has to be done in the Amazon Web Services page. You probably don't already have an AWS account, so create a new one. They do want a credit card number, just in case you go over like a million service calls a month. Now under Security, Identity, and Compliance, click I Am. When the next page pops up, on the left-hand side, click Roles, and then Create Role. That's not like a jelly roll. On this page, make sure AWS Services is selected, click Lambda, and then Next Permission. On this page, you type Basic in the search box, and then click AWS Lambda Basic Execution Role. Also not a jelly roll. Then click Next Tags and Next Review. My button got kind of cut off. I ran out of screen. For the role name, put in Lambda Basic Execution. You can just copy and paste. And then click Create Role. Then go back to the main page by clicking the AWS icon in the upper left. This next step was an unexpected pitfall for me. You have to select the correct region. It may pre-select a region for you, but it might not be the right one. I had to change mine to match the table in the wiki instructions. Now we're going to start editing the Lambda function, which is the actual code for our custom skill. So under Compute, click on Lambda, and then on the next page, click Create Function. On the next page, make sure Author from Scratch is selected, then give your function a name. Haska is a good one. Under Runtime, select Python 3.6. Open up this menu and select Use an Existing Role. Click on the search box and you should get Lambda Basic Execution, which is the role you created earlier. And top it off with another click of the old Create Function button. Now click Add Trigger, then search for Aleka Smart Home. If you don't see it, it's probably because your region is incorrect. This was how I figured out that the region it pre-selected for me was wrong. I had to keep changing the region and going back to this step until finally the Aleka Smart Home option showed up. Now for the application ID, we're going to copy the skill ID from the developer console or from your notepad wherever you saved it earlier. Make sure enable trigger is uh, enabled and then click add. Now when you click on the name of your function, below that it will open the function code box. This is where we're going to upload the Haska zip file. So go to wherever you put it and upload it. Then in the handler box, change it to haska.event underscore handler. And then we're ready to save. When the save spinner stops spinning, it'll open up the haska.py file 
and a file tree to the left. On the left, select config.json, where it says URL, put in your new DuckDNS URL, make sure you do HTTPS, and for bearer token, copy and paste in your Home Assistant long-lived access token. Then click save, stand up, and shake out your legs. We're almost done. Scroll up to the top and copy this ARN key. And paste it in your notebook of keeping this. Now we're going to go back to the Aleka developer console and paste that ARN into the default endpoint box. Scroll down a little and select the correct box for your region. Then paste that same ARN from the default endpoint into the region box. Scroll up, click save. Now open the account linking tab on the left and then copy in the fields from the chart in the instructions. Authorization URI, access token URI, and then the client ID and the client secret that we stored back in our super top secret notebook at the very beginning. Leave the authentication scheme as HTTP and then under scope put in profile. We're going to need all three of these Aleka redirect URLs, so copy them and paste them in your special place. Scroll up and save, then go back to the Amazon Developer Console and click Edit. Under Allowed Return URLs, click Add Another until you have three boxes, and then copy and paste those three redirect URLs that you just saved from step three. Click save one last time and then get up and do the happy dance because you are done. Well, at least you're done with the hard stuff. There is a way you can test your new skill and I recommend you do it since I tested mine and found a couple of errors. Back on this designer page, in the upper right, click test. It'll open up a place where you can paste in some code. Paste in the code from the example, scroll down and hit create. And then after it gives you the error, go back and put in a name. Then click Create again. Now in the drop-down box, next to Test, will be the name of your test. Cross your fingers and click Test. And fail. Maybe. <laughs> this error I got because I hadn't restarted Home Assistant after adding the Aleka and Smart Home lines to my configuration.yaml file. But I'm sure a smart fella like you would never make such a silly mistake. After I fixed that, I went back to the designer page and tested it again. This time, the problem was my long-lived access token was wrong. After a little fixeroo there, my next test was gold. Now before you throw your shoulder out patting yourself on the back, there's one more little step to do. The very, very last step is to go to the Aleka app, either on your phone or in a web browser, go to Skills, Your Skills, then Dev Skills, and you should see your new Haska skill there. Select that and enable it. Give it access to your profile. When you close this tab, it will automatically start the process for discovering new devices. When that process finishes, eventually, you should be met with a list of all of the entities that you have in Home Assistant. This Playground Tester Input Boolean is an entity I made just to show that this worked. I didn't capture the audio live during my test, but when I told Aleka to turn on the Playground Tester and turn off the Playground Tester, it worked. woo -hoo! Well, that's it. Amazon Echo with Home Assistant and without a subscription. I was honestly surprised that it worked as well as it did. You just have to follow the instructions exactly. Now, if you try this and it doesn't work for you and you have trouble, don't call me because <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to help you. But Mike and Mike have set up a community page where people can ask questions and get some help. Of course, you can really ask me and I will do my best to help you. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios. The one that I'm going to show you is called Hacks. Hasks. Hack-ka. Hack. ha ka Hask-ka. ha ka
Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> if you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon or just like and share my videos. That's easy. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.